This is Dr. Narco Longo talking to you from the Garden of Eden, Iron City, Georgia, Seminole County, just north of Lake Seminole. And here we're standing in front of the largest oak tree in the world. Uh, uh, we're down here uh, uh, July the 15th, 2015. This big old tree, we uh, uh, measured it the other day, the, uh, Mark McClellan and Chuck Norville with the Georgia Forestry came. And uh, me personally, I, I believe from my research and from what I know and reading about the other one, that this is going to be the biggest in the world. The largest oak tree in the world. Now, there's many oak trees that would like to be the largest in the world. But when we determine this, we're talking about single trunk or single stem. And that's what makes this tree unique, is it's a single tree. Whereas oak trees, especially live oaks, like this one, tend to grow in clumps and clusters. And those can get pretty large. Right. What is yeah. the providence of a multi-trunk tree? Are they multiple acorns to, to make that? Yep. Most well, likely. <laughs> or, or, or and live oaks are real tricky because they, they branch low. That's, that's yeah. just the kind of trees they are. Okay, a, another question. They, uh, uh, this is by far the biggest single trunk. Yes. Yeah. That I know of. That I know of. Now, it's, what makes this one especially unique is some of the largest oak trees in the world, regardless of how many stems, trunks, stalks they have, still are only barely larger than this tree here. How many trunks does the Waycross tree have? Uh, three. The three. So it's gonna be 511 and the Waycross oak is 536. Trunk volume is not taken in the big trees. It's not. And, and as David and I were saying, no. a 500-pound hog is still bigger than a 400-pound oh, yeah. hog. Let me tell you, just because a tree is a champion doesn't mean it's the tallest. It doesn't mean it's the oldest. doesn't mean it's the fattest. doesn't mean it's the widest. Yeah. It just means by this formula that was set up in 1938, it has the most points. All that means, that's it. Uh -huh. It has the most points. It right. means nothing else. Now, the age for this tree, they haven't given for certain, but I've heard ranges from 200, 300, 600. I joined the Navy at 18 years old. So y'all done it, y'all done, uh, done it. The tree was about the same size then. Mm -hmm. And I'll soon be 70, uh, 93 now. You'll be 93, wow. And it doesn't seem like it's changed in size yeah, in 93 years. In I mean, wow. I'm gonna have to come out and say this is much, much older than 600 because I know of trees in South Florida and Miami who are five to 600. They're not even a quarter of this size. So this oak tree is 17 foot in circumference. I was told that the Smithsonian did a core sample in the 70s and they said it was somewhere around five to 600 years old, um, before my time, obviously. And those were dated by the Smithsonian themselves. Um, so with this tree, we really have something special here. All right, I'm Eli Dickerson here. I'm a volunteer with American Forest, and American Forest is the national nonprofit organization that maintains the national champion tree list. Um, big trees is what they refer to them as. And Georgia Forestry Commission was kind enough to invite me. Um, I work with them on a lot of the state champion trees. They were kind enough to invite me to the Spooner Oak, which is a magnificent tree and uh, we, we can definitely verify that it will be a state co-champion live oak, which is fantastic. And uh, who knows, it might actually end up being a national champion tree as well. So 
the points are based off of one point for every inch in circumference, so you get 385 points right off the bat, one point for every foot in height, so that's 89 points, and then for spread, this is kind of a weird thing, but it's just something that has stuck for a long time, it's one-fourth of a point for every foot in crown spread. So I have to take this number, 147, divide by four, and I get 36.75. So we don't do decimals, we round up. So it's gonna be 511, and the Waycross Oak is 536. Now, to see if that's within 5%, I'll take the difference. 536 minus 511, 536 is 4.6%, so it's within 5%. So that's how we do it. Okay. Here we are at the Spooner Oak, the Spooner tree as it's called. This is Spooner land. And why is the oak tree special? Aside from being so large, how's the oak in itself special? Well, the oak tree is attributed to the god Jupiter, Zeus, Thor, the thunder god, Jesus, you could even see. Oak wood is often associated with Jesus, we find. The word oak comes from the old pagan god, Uko. And Uko is where we get the word okay. If everything's okay, then everything's good. It's God, it's great, it's wonderful. It's like Christ, okay? Now, oak is the same word as okay. So we can see in this tree, we have a special connection to Christ. Because Christ, whether Christianity likes it or not, is a representation of the pure, benevolent thunder god, as seen in all the pagan traditions before him. We find in the works of J.R.R. Tolkien that the line of Thor, or Thorn, Durin, all of these Thor characters, this family, we find them associated with the oak tree. The oak is an especially underrated tree, and there may be some a political agenda behind that. As you know, Jesus is not a favored character among today's uh, pop culture. It's no coincidence that we find the oak tree often getting the short end of the stick in terms of what's the most sacred tree, this and that. Well, in Finland, as I said, this tree is attributed to Ukko, who is the god of thunder. And this is where we get OK. It's no coincidence, what city do we find the thunder in? OK city. OK see thunder. That's a little, <laughs> might be a stretch there. But we find in uh, the NBA, which team is it that uses OK in their in their uh, abbreviation, Oklahoma, OKC. And what is their mascot? It is the thunder, OKC thunder. So we see God makes himself known at every junction of human life, not just the ones we expect them. But why this is important and how you can test this, how you can see this is the bark of the oak tree is fashioned, shaped in a way as to look as if it's being struck by lightning, as if it's being splintered, shocked. The crevices in the nooks formed by the bark replicate electric, static energy. And this is how we know this is a particularly electrical or thunder related tree. The oak tree is the highest tree on the planet and it was associated with the highest patriarch on the planet, Uko, which is where we get the word oak. Now, in Helsinki, Finland, in the center of the earth, the middle of the earth, we find a special reverence for the oak tree as well. And according to one tradition, the oldest and highest, most royal family on this planet was buried under oak trees. Their ash was buried under the oak tree. So the oak 
Back to the Box Saga is associated with Uko, or you could say the All-Father, the highest patriarch on the planet, the highest male god in the pagan pantheon. So the oak tree, or the Uko tree, we can say harbors Christ consciousness. If everything's okay, if everything's great, good, we're, we're saying it is in like of Jesus or Christ. Everything's good. Everything's wonderful. So if things are okay, the word okay comes from the oak tree, uko. And for all people descended from Northern Europe who can trace their lineage back to the North Pole, whether they know it or not, blonde hair, blue eyes, red hair, green eyes, so all recessive genes like light hair, light eyes, light skin, go back to the North Pole. And this tree, the oak tree, and its subspecies and ancestors have traveled alongside Northern European people as they have spread across the planet. And they are the most recent race to have spread across this planet. So in the oak tree, we find a special connection to the Northern European peoples. Well, interestingly, here in Seminole County, Georgia, and southward into Apalachicola River area of Florida, this is the true Garden of Eden. And what we find is in the Garden of Eden, between the four rivers, which I will lay out in another part of this video, we are standing between those four rivers right now, here in Lake Seminole. Lake Seminole, named after the Seminole Indians, Seminole County. But also the word Seminole, meaning first or original. So with this tree, we may very well have man's origin, the first tree, one of the first. Whatever the case may be, you will not find in another oak tree like this anywhere else. E.E. E. Calloway, Florida's 1936 Republican candidate for governor, he labeled this area as the Garden of Eden, and he was not the only one to have, but he did not even factor in trees like this to his decision. Now this only serves to further corroborate those theories. It's no coincidence that here, in the Garden of Eden, we find the largest oak tree on the planet being watered by the most life-giving waters on the planet, planted into the most fertile ground on the planet. This is no coincidence. But you'll see the oak is the tree of the thunder god of Christ and the, the patron tree of the European people, northern European people. Okay. <clears throat> Roger Spooner. Uh, I'm... Uh, Right now, I'm, I'll soon be uh, 93 years old. I joined the Navy in 1941, and the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor in December, and I uh, was, they sent for me to the Pacific. I got back home in 1943 after my ship had got sunk out of Miami. I were on the Yorktown aircraft carrier. Uh, it, 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 it's quiet. I was in the Carl Sea battle on May the 8th off Australia. We lost the Lexington there, aircraft carrier, and we got uh, bombed and uh, flight deck tore up and, and, and bombed and torpedoed, and we wound up in Pearl Harbor in the latter part of uh, May, and we uh, were in dry dock there for 72 hours before uh, uh, being sent back out to sea. We thought we, we'd be able to come home, but they didn't know it wasn't, it wasn't to be. They, uh, the next morning, whenever we uh, were going, come day, I looked and seen the sun was rising in the, on the fantail. I knew that going well. We were headed west. We wasn't headed to the states. And so, a couple of days later, I was 
skipper, uh, Captain Buckmaster, he uh, told us that uh, where we were headed, that we'd, uh, we'd broke the uh, code on the Japs uh, 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 on the, found out all about uh, their code and all, and and told us we were headed into a battle of Midway, that the Japs was headed for Midway to take it. And uh, we uh, we wound up there getting in touch with the Japs, meeting them at, uh, on June the 4th. And uh, uh, we, we wound up, we didn't, we got sunk on, actually we went under on June the 7th, uh, at about 7.45, but uh, the uh, Japs lost four aircraft carriers in that battle that we were in, and then we lost to Yorktown. I was on it when it sunk. Uh, and they wound up carrying us back to Pearl Harbor. I was there in Pearl Harbor for a good while at N Admiral Nimmons' headquarters, SINPAC. And uh, then, uh, I, I, I was in, now this was getting into, I was in 41 when I first went over there, and then this year was 43. So I, I hadn't been home since I was in the Navy, and I, I was driving for a one-star admiral at Sinpac, and I told him one morning, I said, I want to I wanna go home. I said, I ain't been home. I said, I, I just, I'm just ready to go home. I said, he said, when you want to go? I said, I'm, anytime you let me go. <laughs> so he told me to pack my stuff up and go to the receiving barracks. And... Uh, so, by gosh, they found out that I was putting in for submarine duty. I had to put in for new construction, so I put in for submarine duty, from from aircraft carrier to submarine. And uh, so, doggone, they come from the sub base over there at, 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 at Pearl there and, and got me and carried me over there at the sub base. They put me on a sub. I said, that ain't going to happen. No. Well, I got a hold of it, my Commodore and uh, one star admiral and told him what happened to me. He said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just get, leave it to me. He says, um, I'll, I'll have it straightened out. And so the next morning, by gosh, I was back at the receiving barracks, and they sent me over to down to the Honolulu. To the, I went aboard a, a USS Matzoni, or some, used to be some uh, deluxe, Cruisers that went back and forth from the states, but they uh, went taking them over, and they were moving tr troops back and forth on them. Then, anyhow, I uh, went through sub school in New London, and uh, they they sent me from there to Australia, and uh, I went aboard a submarine in Australia, Perth, Australia, or. Uh, uh, 43, 44, and 45, and uh, we'd go out every, uh, for about six, 60 to 90 days on the sub, but no, people don't know about it, uh, and we'd be gone that length of time, and we'd come back in, and uh, they would uh, give us two weeks leave, we'd uh, give them an address where we'd be, and we Partied and had a big time. Didn't know where we. And by the way, just make it let you know how how the thing was going. We knew we'd lost a lot of subs, but we didn't know how many. But we finally found out we'd lost 52 subs in World War II. And so I, we we were naturally partying and having a big time while while we was alive. Uh, we didn't know where we were going to make it or not whenever we went out and come back. Uh, we wound up in in uh, 45 over in, uh, they carried uh, some tenders over to Guam over there, and we were tied upside of one of them in Guam, and uh, they had us up in the hills up there, recreation they call it. <laughs> All at once we heard guns were firing down in the harbor, 
and the horns were blowing and everything, and the war was over. And uh, so we uh, we wound up then. I, I was transferred then to a, a tender there, and we wound up then in Yokosuka, Japan. And um, we we I was there, there until first day of November in '45, and we. I was there whenever the Japs signed the papers and everything there. They, they were in the harbor there. They went, I was I watching them while they was there. And when I made it back to the States, come back through the Panama Canal. I went I went through it in 41, Christmas Day, and I went back through it on in uh, November 45, four years later. Uh, it was, it was, it was, Quite a, quite a deal there. They, they transferred me then to Key West. I went aboard USS Sea Leopard in 483 in Key West, and I was on it down there uh, 18 months and got my discharge. I, I, I joined the Navy for a uh, uh, regular Navy. I thought maybe I might make a career out of it, and uh, I born. I, Joined it for six years. They call it, that was regular Navy. Uh, four years was reserve. And I said, well, no, I'm a, when I joined, I was, I was after getting off the farm, you know. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't have enough of following that mule. When I, but um, no, I, my ship was sunk out from under me when I was 19 years old. I wasn't, it was, it was quite an quite experience for a young boy, I tell you. And, I thought, I'd, I thought I'd never make it. So I, I don't know. I, I guess that's after I. No, I did. I had an accident in Key West. I partying down there, riding a motorcycle, and I got, I got crippled up down there, wrecked, and I never was able to put my uniform back on anymore, and I got discharged from the hospital.